The family of five women will never be the same again after their loved ones died at the hands of a serial killer in 2021. He's been dubbed as the shopping cart killer. And what's terrifying is there may be more victims. In fact, authorities are quite certain of it. Hi, I'm Linda and welcome to the It's a Crime where I cover true crime cases each week and love to dive into the details and into the timelines. This case is shocking and eye-opening, especially in the world of online dating. It shows how a predator lures his victims to satisfy the dark side of him over and over and over again. This is the case of the shopping cart killer. So now, let's get into it. It was November 23rd, 2021, the day the first two victims would be found in Harrisonburg, Virginia, a city in the Shenandoah Valley, and in 2016 won a few awards, including being the number six favorite town in America by Travel and Leisure, and the third happiest mountain town by Blue Ridge Country Magazine. Harrisonburg has a population of just over 50,000 people. 54-year-old Aline Elizabeth Redman, also known as Beth, was a resident of Harrisonburg. Beth struggled with the death of her husband, who died in 2017, but was beginning to move forward in her life and found a new job and a new apartment. Her next thing on the list, find companionship. On October 24th, Beth told a family member that she was going to watch the football game with a friend named Aunt at the Howard Johnson Hotel on Linda Lane in Harrisonburg. Beth's daughter Jessica never heard the name of Aunt before. Her daughter said, she told me she was watching football. I asked her where she was. She said the Howard Johnson. Then when I asked who she was with, she told me none of my business. And when I asked which room, she said none of my business. I figured she was out with a friend and she just didn't want to tell me. That's the last time anyone heard from Beth again. Her body was found on November 23rd in a vacant lot in Harrisonburg in a shopping cart. Her killer? 35-year-old Anthony Eugene Robinson of Washington, D.C., a.k.a. Ant. Anthony would meet his victims on Plenty of Fish, an online dating service, and another one called Tagged. He would lure these women to hotel rooms through these online dating apps. He'd then kill them and transport them in a red shopping cart. Chief Kevin Davis from the Fairfax Police Department said, He meets his victims on dating sites then meets his victims at motels. After he inflicts trauma to his victims and kills them, he transports their bodies to their final resting place, literally in a shopping cart, and there's video to that effect. Jessica, Beth's daughter, talked about Beth and said, she still had a lot of life left in her. She was lonely, and so I mean, I guess that might be the reason why she had met up with this monster that took her away from us. I knew that I had to lose my mom one day, but never did I imagine that it would be in a way like this. It's the most hurtful thing that anybody could ever, ever experience. He took her away from us, and for what? When I spoke to her on the phone, she didn't sound scared. She didn't sound worried. So apparently she trusted him in some way. I don't know how long she had been talking to him. The very same day on November 23rd, in the same location as Beth, authorities found another woman. 39-year-old Tanita Larise Smith from Charlottesville, Virginia. She went by Nita. She's the mother of six children. She was last seen on November 14th in the evening in Charlottesville and found about an hour away from her home. Authorities figure she was killed on November 14th and then she was reported missing on November 19th. Nita is the second person in the family to go missing and killed. In 2012, on November 20th, one of her family members went missing at only 19 years old, and at first it was classified as a missing person case, but a few years later it was deemed as a homicide. It's a case that is still unsolved. Her family said, We are heartbroken and trying to find ways to process this as the pain hits extra hard as it happens during the same time of year when we are reminded that our beloved Sage Smith disappeared not to return as of nine years ago. The family is managing and struggling through the pain of loss during this difficult time. They are trying to ensure a sense of normalcy for Tanita's children as they are gripped with the reality of living without their mother. The next victims wouldn't be discovered until December 15th, three weeks later. 29-year-old Cheyenne Brown of Southeast DC was four months pregnant and had a seven-year-old son. She was chatting with Anthony on the dating site. On September 30th, Cheyenne hopped a bus and met up with Anthony at a metro station in Washington, D.C., and then they went to a motel called the Moon Inn in Alexandria, Virginia. 
It said that Anthony Robinson stayed at that motel at least six times, according to police. Like the other women, Cheyenne also disappeared. When authorities initially searched, they didn't find Cheyenne, nor did they find many leads. But on December 15th, they went back to the location and something caught their eye, a red shopping cart. They remembered the Harrisonburg murders. Could it be? In a wooded area just off Route 1 and near the Moon Inn, they found a container and in it was Cheyenne. Her family was able to identify her by recognizing her distinctive tattoo. Cheyenne's mom, Nicandra Brown, is calling the shopping cart killer a monster and says it's unbelievable how someone could do something like that to vulnerable women. She said, I'm so angry, I don't even have tears anymore. I'm just like, why would you do this to my daughter? She didn't deserve that. Now back to the container that Cheyenne was found in, near the shopping cart. She wasn't the only one in there. Yet another victim was found, another woman. Anthony's fourth victim. 48-year-old Stephanie Harrison was from Redding, California. She traveled from California to check out Washington, D.C. in August. And on August 19th, she checked in at the Moon Inn Motel. Like the others, she also disappeared. A missing persons poster was created in September for Stephanie. And on it, it said that Stephanie checked in to the Moon Inn Motel. And it was the last time anyone heard from her. There were 300 flyers made and posted across Northern Virginia and Washington, D.C. The flyer also stated, Stephanie suffers from schizophrenia, is in need of medications and may need medical attention. She is very vulnerable and gullible in her mental state. Authorities see the poster and it prompts the investigators to head to California to collect DNA samples. They confirm it's Stephanie. This wouldn't be Anthony Robinson's last victim. Another woman was found and connected to Anthony. She's 40 years old and her name is Sonia Champ from Washington, D.C., Anthony's fifth known victim. She was found in the 200 block of F Street Northeast in D.C., a few blocks from Union Station on September 7, 2021. She was found inside a shopping cart by someone passing by. They called 911 and Sonia was pronounced dead. She was only covered with a blanket and through digital evidence, it places Anthony in the same area around the time of Sonia's disappearance. Sonia is described as a sweet person who kept to herself. She loved being around family and loved to help others. Her mom said, I fell apart after I heard my daughter was dead. It hurt a lot. A lot of crying, a lot of sleepless nights. I would like to talk to him. I really would just to see the type of person he was that you would take people's lives. Now let's talk about the Moon Inn Motel where two of the women were known to have stayed. It's in Alexandria, Virginia, a place known for its old town and features historic architecture, shops and restaurants, its waterfront and gas lit cobblestone streets. Now, according to the motel manager, Anthony stayed there from September 19th to the 21st, and then he returned from September 30th to October 1st, which lines up with the disappearance of Cheyenne Brown and Stephanie Harrison. The police mentioned he stayed there six times in total. The manager described him as being very quiet. And the hotel manager is saying that it's getting very tough and no one wants to stay there. Now, from the outside, it looks fairly decent, but on the inside, According to the reviews, it's far from that, besides the fact that these women were murdered there. It has a 2.7 rating for cleanliness, and overall you can see how many poor and terrible reviews there are, and the reviews were actually bad before the murders. One of the reviews says, terrible, room is a dump, went to Walmart to get new sheets, bathroom was disgusting. Non-smoking room smelled like cigarettes. Only redeeming property is that the staff is nice and price was not bad. I do not recommend this place unless it is your only option. And since the murders, some people were posting about the shopping cart killer. In one of them it says, my room's wide doorway made it very convenient to roll my target cart in and out. And the other one said, Norman Bates approved. Lovely setup as always, it fulfills my needs and my target shopping carts. As for the killers luring the women from these dating sites, someone from Crime Stoppers was talking about this and talking about dating sites. Have a listen to what he had to say. The dark side of online dating apps are luring millions of women to perhaps 
obviously what we're seeing is mortal danger right now. There are no background checks. We all know sex offenders troll it. You're essentially playing Russian roulette with your life when you right. divulge personal information and continue to go out and meet people that you do not know. It's almost like it's it's a great it's like a toy store for yeah. wannabe serial killers with an unlimited supply. Chief Davis of Fairfax County Police Department said, there is no doubt in my mind that these are not the only women. He's a predator as all serial killers are, and it's our collective effort in law enforcement to do everything we can with each other and with the community to identify other places where he has been so we can bring closure and ultimately justice. He said, thankfully, he's incarcerated and it gives us the ability to work backwards while he's still not out there killing. The chief also said that he's planning to get to the bottom of this and he believes that there's survivors still out there. Anthony was arrested in November, shortly after the first two women were found. He was charged with two counts of first-degree murder, and the charges will continue to add up for him. If there are more victims, which from the sounds of it there are, then hopefully the families can get answers they need to make sure that this guy is put away for good. And never do this to another human being again. The chief also said, that's what worries us. He didn't suddenly turn into who he is three months ago. It's said that Anthony has a remarkable absence of a criminal history, and he's had various jobs and addresses ranging from New York City to Fairfax, Virginia. Seems like Anthony is skilled at keeping a secret and getting away with murder, until now. Anthony is currently in custody in the Rockingham Harrisonburg Regional Jail in Virginia. If you have any information, you can contact the Fairfax Police Department's Major Crimes Bureau at 703-246-7800. You can submit tips anonymously through Crime Solvers Program at 1-866-411-TIPS and the Harrisonburg Police Department at 540-434-4436 or through their Crime Solvers Anonymous tip line at 540-574-5050. Let me know below your thoughts about the case. And question for you, have you ever encountered a creeper on your online dating adventures? Let me know below. Stay safe out there. Tell a friend where you're going if you're meeting up with somebody that you don't know. Make it a public meeting spot. And it's a good idea to have a safe word or phrase. Protect yourself. Please hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell to be sure you get more videos from It's a Crime. I upload every single week. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon. Authorities see the poster and it prompts investigators to head to California to collect dam, dam samples. First, it's vehicles. Now it's a helicopter. A rare helicopter. Oh look, another helicopter. A city in the Shenandoah, a city in the Shenandoah, Shenandoah, a city in the Shenandoah, blah, 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 I can't say it, and shows how a predator, a predator, bonk, bonk, bonk.